This morning, I want to continue on the same subject. The minister of God as a witness of the light. And yesterday, God gave us the opportunity to see our model, John the Baptist, as model for a minister that will be a witness of the light. And uh, God gave us the opportunity yesterday to look into at least some aspect, even though it's not possible to exhaust everything, but we're able to look at some aspect. Praise the Lord. And uh, as I ask the Lord where we should focus today, I have this uh, prompting that we should talk more about how we can be an effective and fruitful witness of the light. How, as a minister, <coughs> we can be an effective and fruitful witness of the light. We spoke about the, who we are as minister yesterday, and the, the ultimate is that if you are a witness, you'll be a minister. If you are a minister, you are supposed to be a witness. So, but how are we going to be effective and fruitful? A pastor led us in one of one important prayer. In fact, I was just telling him that I didn't have the link because actually I want to go to the prayer session. <laughs> Yesterday, I wanted to have more time to pray, but you know. So and one of the prayer he said something when he was leading us that some of us are working, but we are not getting the kind of results. So what is wrong? That means something is just missing. Praise the name of the Lord. If we are truly the minister, we are supposed to be an effective and fruitful witness. Our witnessing, our responsibility to be a witness as a minister must give us research, must produce fruit. Glory be to God. And we saw that in the life of John the Baptist. He had proof. He had result as a witness to the light. His witness was so effective that when they asked Jesus whether he's actually the son of God or not, he said, go to John the Baptist. And by the time they ask, he asked them a question, they could not answer. That was the effectiveness of the ministry of John the Baptist. You know, like I said yesterday, the man of God just said now that John was a converter. You know, like I said that the anointing to convert is greater the anointing than the anointing to do what? To raise the dead. I'm sure if we have the opportunity to choose the anointing to save more people and the anointing to raise the dead, you will, you will choose the anointing to raise the dead because that will make you popular. That will make people to come around you. Amen. <laughs> but God will help us <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The dead you raise may not end up in eternity. <laughs> you may not. <laughs> like I told you that. Some will even run away right here. <laughs> Why are you on that? Amen. Please turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to read from verse 20 to 26. I want to dwell directly on what it takes to become an effective and fruitful witness of the light. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 26. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, 
if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, it will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepare for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. Teach us this morning. We ask for enlightenment. We ask for illumination from you in the name of Jesus. Speak to all of us in the language we can understand. And we ask that you come to our level in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we know you will glorify the Father and the Son. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. So, you may not be called to a full-time ministry, like I said yesterday, but God has called you and I at the point of our salvation to be a witness. And our witness is about the light, Jesus Christ. Witnessing to the world about the power of Christ to remove sin from our lives. The power that he has to deliver us from the bondage of Satan and his agents. The power that he has to heal all sicknesses and diseases. He has the power to promote, to prosper, and to give us eternal life. Therefore, if this is the dimension of the witness we are called to fulfill, then we must look for how to be effective and fruitful as a witness of that light. In other words, we are not just doing it as someone that is beating the hair, but someone that is bringing in harvest, having the backing and the proof that actually our witnesses are producing results in the lives of men and women. So what are those qualities of a minister that God can use greatly to be a witness of the light? Now, I want to start from that verse 20. The Bible speaks of a great house or a large house. Now, it's simply a metaphor that refers to the house of God, which in some other part of the scripture is called God's building or God's temple. So it speaks of a great house. And then it tells us in that great house, there are various vessels or article. Then it talks of vessels of gold, of silver, of wood, of art. Now, they are all vessels in God's house. They are all vessels in God's house. But you know that out of these vessels listed, some of these vessels are more noble. They are more effective. And they are more fruitful and of more value 
than others. Now, that is not a product of the partiality of God. That is a product of how you want to respond to that privilege of being a minister who will be an effective witness of the light. So we always have it that in a great house, we have the vessels that of silver, that of wood, that of art. But that scripture gives us an understanding that these vessels are comfortable. Now, you see, in the physical, you may not see how you are going to convert the vessel of art to, to but you know, it went on to say, if anyone does something, there's something to do, then it can become and come to the category of that other set of noble vessel. And then become effective. And then have impact as a witness for the light. So verse 11 says, verse 21, that is the same Second Timothy. He said, if a man therefore purge himself from this, if someone cleanses himself of such behavior, he shall be a vessel of honor. Even though the Bible has distinguished be, be, between the one that is of honor, the one that is not of honor, but he said, if a man chooses to do something, it's possible for him to translate from that vessel of dishonor to one of the vessels of honor. In other words, if one has not been effective as a witness, you have not been fruitful. If you choose to take certain steps and change certain attitude and behavior, you can now be converted or become a vessel of honor that will bring Resort and bring fruit to the kingdom. May God make you one of such in the precious name of Jesus. So our level of consecration, our level of dedication will be essential in deciding who will become an effective and a fruitful witness of the light. It's not going to be because God is partial, but it's going to be our level of consecration and commitment that will ultimately determine that we become effective and fruitful witness of the light as a minister. Now, what's the essence of a light you have that is not giving you light? <laughs> Praise God. You know, Jesus said we are the sort of the earth, isn't it? But if the sort lost its sortness, instead of what use it is. Of what use is it? If you call yourself a minister and you are not effective and you are not fruitful, if you call yourself a witness of the light and you are not having result, of what use are you? as a minister or as a witness of the light. There's something to do. God will give us the grace to do those things in the precious name of Jesus. So I would like to break down some of this quality that I expect out of a minister so that we can be greatly used and become effective and fruitful witness of the light. And effectiveness is in degree. Amen? Fruitfulness is also in degree. He said, some bring forth 30 fold, isn't it? Some 60 fold, then some 100 fold. They are all fruitful. But I pray that God will bring us to the maximum level of fruitfulness and effectiveness. 
in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So number one, the number one factor to become an effective and fruitful witness of the light is separating yourself from ungodly relationship. If you want to be effective and fruitful as a witness of the light, the first thing you need to do is to separate yourself from ungodly relationship. So in verse 20, he said, if someone cleanses himself or set himself apart from the letter. Now, what is the letter? The letter in that verse speaks about the vessel of dishonor. Because it says someone to honor some. Now, if anyone cleanses himself from the letter. Now, I want you to understand because I'm talking to mature people. Now, this is this ungodly relationship I'm talking about is not about unbelievers. Praise God. I'm talking about relationship with people who are in the great house. But they are facial of dishonor. I hope we get what I'm trying to say. So I'm not talking about when I say that. I know I don't have an unbeliever as a friend. I'm not talking of unbeliever this morning. If anyone cleanses himself or set himself apart, from this vessel of dishonor, this vessel that are ignoble, then he shall become a vessel of honor. Then he said it can now be used for the great work, prepared for every good work. That speaks of effectiveness and fruitfulness. So the first thing is to separate yourself from ungodly Relationship, ungodly relationship. Every vessel of dishonor are ungodly people. Praise God. Anybody that does not bring honor to God is ungodly. It doesn't matter what title he gives to himself. So understanding that our relationship affects how much God can use us as a witness of the light. Our relationship so much affects how much or how greatly God can use us as an effective and fruitful witness of the light. If our relationship are primarily with professing believers, I'm going to talk about two categories of be believers now. I'm going to talk about those are referred to as Professing believers, and uh, those are, I refer to as yoking believers. <laughs> Praise God. Now, we have in the great house today, professing believers. Profess that they are born again, that they are believers. In fact, profess that they are called, but they compromise with the world. They still love sin. And they are caught in false teaching. Now, when you associate with such, it will hinder your own fruitfulness and effectiveness as a witness of the light. They do not deny that they are believers, but in most of their lifestyle, they compromise. Now, if you have a, a light, and then take, for example, the light of your vehicle, and the portion of that light is dirty, will it give you the light you need? No. Now, association with such category of professing believers we hinder your fruitfulness and effectiveness. And you know it is said, and I want to say it is true, that where you will be in the next 10 years is largely affected by the people you associate with and the books you read. That's another realm of association. Praise God. So, and the scripture is in line with this statement that 
the association you keep will affect how much effective you will be. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. We are familiar with that scripture. He that walk with wise will become wise, and the company of fools will be destroyed. He's talking about effect of association. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manner. Evil communication corrupts good manner. So if you associate with someone in the house of the Lord that live a compromised life, it will make it difficult for you to be a true witness of the light and the true and effective witness for the Lord. And then I talk about the yoking believers. Now, it's another level of relationship in the church that is a little bit difficult for you to break. And it will take you a committed decision to separate yourself so that you can be effective as a witness of the light. So the yoking relationship are relationships that pull you away from God. They yoke you. They are friends you keep. As whatever may be business partner, whatever it is, uh, people in the, <laughs> praise God. People may be in the same department with you. But then, if you do not separate from them, your effectiveness as a minister called to be a witness of the light will be limited. That is what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. You must separate yourself from them. So, the first step to be an effective and efficient witness of the light is taking a step to avoid intimate relationship. We have to be in the same church. We have to remain in the same body of Christ. But we must avoid intimate relationship with those professing believers that lived compromised life. Because they will not allow us to become an effective and useful witness of the light. There are people tell us, not really seen. You know, when somebody is telling you not really seen, it means there is something around his life. Sin must be seen. Righteousness must be righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know them. The way they talk to you, the discussion you have together, that these people are pulling you to the place of compromising. And then it can be among the council of ministers. He says he's a minister, but what kind of minister is this? Praise God. I went to a ministry to share the word of God with their pastors too. And then uh, there's another pastor who is close to the head pastor in that church. So when I was rounding up, I said, okay, if there is any question. So one of the pastors asked me a question about, sir, if a pastor like this, like this, is it really the right thing to do? When I finished the teaching, the head pastor called me aside. He said, you know what? My pastor is talking about a pastor that I'm close to. 
You <laughs> he said he's talking. So he now told me himself that he has been looking. The way this man is living and it, it will affect his ministry. You know, because that pastor is under him, I think he could not go to him straight and say, Daddy, uh, this kind of. So he just asked me like a general question. Excuse me, sir. If somebody is, you, you understand the kind of style. And I didn't know anyway. So I answered straight away. And my friend said, look, that my pastor is about this other pastor. And I told him that I know that pastor also. It will not help you. So you, that is the beginning. Avoid intimate relationship with those people. They are in the house. Like I said, I'm not talking about unbelievers. But they are not going to allow you to be effective. In fact, the moment some people know you have something together, they cut away from you. They cease to respect your own ministry. You may not be involved in it, but because you are in relationship with such people, they cut themselves away from you. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, we saw that Abraham was called out because his family members were idolaters. They were his family members. But do you know for him to be effective, for what God is calling him to do, God said he should come out of them. Even though they are his family, his father and other people. And unfortunately for him, he took one of them along. And of course, you know what happened for a time. They served other gods. So God said, come out and don't join them to do that. So you need to ask yourself, are you in a relationship that is keeping you back from being greatly used by God? And some of them are yoking relationship. I have a friend. I had a friend. We went to the university together. I know him as a brother. And uh, we were going on like that. And then we all finished. We came down here. Himself happened to be a lawyer. And, uh, you know, and uh, God's grace, I began the ministry work. He was more into active legal practice. But a child of God, he will come for our programs. He will share testimony. But at a point, I realized that the kind of other company that this person is keeping will affect my ministry. <laughs> he will tell me some days that one affair told him that he saw a vision for him. Eh, eh? How did you, wh what brought you together? Where did you meet? You understand what I'm trying to say? Then, there was a time somebody had a matter and I told him, I didn't have time, a friend from Lagos, and I said, please take this matter and help this person. And what he did, I knew that I must cut off that relationship. And everywhere in the time, we always be saying, it's my friend, it's my friend. It's my, you know, he was so proud, it's my friend, it's my friend. I said, we have to cut. And you know, to cut some of this relationship, you don't need to really tell them, I don't want you to be my friend again. There are just steps to take. So I decided to take some steps. And my elder brother knows that we are friends. So one day my elder brother called me and he said, eh, do you know what? Your friend came to me. So what did he say? He said, he, said he told him that he has observed. He's like, I don't want us to be friends again. I said, oh, that has helped me. So I told my other brother, I said, exactly. I don't want us to be friends again. Because I want to shine. There's no way that relationship will not affect my own shining. My own witness. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So you need to ask yourself, any relationship you are keeping back, that is keeping you back from being greatly used by God. 
that has not allowed you to be an effective and fruitful witness, you must cut it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. We are for come out from among them and be ye separate, see it the Lord. That is the first thing you need to do if you want to become an effective and fruitful witness of the light. That alone will speak for you. Number two, to be greatly used by God as an effective and fruitful witness of the light, you must flee youthful lust. I just want to use that, that scripture, but I'm, I'm going to explain it. You must flee youthful lust. Now, some other version of the Bible refer to it as evil passion. Evil passion. Evil passion. Now, what does that word refer to? It just simply refers to as evil desires. Evil desires. Brother and sister, minister of God, if you want to be effective, you must flee evil desires. Now, the word flee is in the present tense. That is, is continuous. We have to continually flee. <laughs> Praise God. So that we will not get caught in the sin. He said, flee this evil desire, lust. You are the one that will flee. Because evil desire will look for every one of us. Amen. Evil desire will come and check you where you are seated. Even where you are praying and fasting, evil desire will look for you. Luke chapter 4. Jesus was engaged in 40 days prayer and fasting, isn't it? But what did you see next? And the Bible says, the devil went to the wilderness. He traveled that journey. Certain where he was fasting and praying. Because the Bible says, and the devil said to him, isn't it? If you are the son. I mean, somebody went to wilderness. Has he not run away from the devil? But the devil now went to him there too and still had a dialogue with him. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. If you are the son of God, jump down. Then, if you will worship me, all these things, I'll give it over to you. And the Bible says, the devil left him for what? For a season. In other words, me, Lord, pata, pata, oh. So, when he say flee, it's a continuous tense. The minister that will be effective and fruitful is not the minister that will not be tempted. It's the minister that will flee. Praise God. Because he's going to look for every one of us. Genesis, it says, sin lies at the door. So, the evil desires, because once you allow them to get hold of you, you start preaching nonsense. You know, yesterday I said, faithful ministers are not those who manufacture the message. Who are just true to communicating the message. It will look for you. But it has to be a continuous fleeing from these evil desires. So when it sought you, you flee from it. <laughs> God will help us in the precious name of Jesus. Now, two aspects of this evil passion that I want to mention. Number one, selfish ambition. This evil passion, desire that we must flee 
so that we can be effective as a witness of the light is selfish ambition. Yesterday, <coughs> we understood from the word of God that we are not the light, isn't it? We are only the witness. Now, selfish ambition wants you to focus on making yourself great instead of making the Lord great. You want to be the first in line and the first chosen. You want to be the most successful. And when this desire, you don't flee them, they overwhelm you and stop you from being an effective witness of the light. You start pursuing how you'll be the first. You start pursuing how you'll be great. And then you are somewhere under a pastor and then you feel you, are, you just go and then you perish like that. Because you have given room to this evil desire. You don't understand that you are effective to the extent of that connection with the man of God that God has placed over you. So you jump out and then you perish completely. Nobody knows about you. Nobody hears about you again. The early disciple of Jesus, one of the place or the thing they argue about was who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. You know that story very well. Now these are people who are supposed to go and witness so, and talk about Jesus, about his greatness, about his power. And then they sat down and they were asking themselves who will be the greatest among them. That selfish ambition was going to take over and overwhelm the assignment of being the witness to the light. And what happened? In order to, be, to, to, to gain upper hand, James and John, they went and brought their mother. <laughs> Maybe the mothers of the other uh, ten, they don't know Jesus, but their own mother knows Jesus. So she followed them. I mean, these are not small children, no. They brought their mother. <laughs> I don't, are you following? I just want to do, they brought their mother. Ah, and the, the Jesus said, welcome, Mama, what is it? Ah, there's only one request I have. Oh. Uh, the most two prominent uh, position, the right and the left, I want you to allow my two children to occupy it. That is somebody who is called to ministry. Is Bothered about what position? It is one area you must flee. If nobody knows you and Jesus knows you, is that not enough? I didn't hear your answer. Is that not enough? If you are prominent before God, is that not okay for you? I don't know how many people know the seven sons of Scavers. But one thing is that the devil said, they didn't tell me about you. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Most important. If God will greatly use you as an effective and fruitful witness, then you must flee selfish ambition. You can read Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4 when you get back home because of our time. Philippians 2, 3 to 4. And the summary of that scripture is that we should not be motivated by selfish ambition. Some are building churches, some are starting ministry today. The bottom line is what? Selfish ambition. If food desire, they must know me too. Praise God. They must call me daddy too. I 
I must become GO2. <laughs> I listened to Pastor Adeboye somewhere. He said, it was a minister's conference. He said, those of you who are designed to be Jew, you have mental problem. If you know what it is involved in Jew, <laughs> because you think it's all about popularity and you understand what I'm trying to say. Each of, each of us should, in humility, be moved to treat one another as more important than ourselves. We should be concerned not only about our own interests, but about the interests of God and that of others. That is how we can shine and we can be an effective witness of the light. Paul was writing somewhere, he spoke about ministers of God and he said there, that this other minister are concerned about themselves, but this one is concerned about the kingdom of God. You know, selfish ambition, it doesn't matter your title, is a proof of spiritual immaturity. Look at it. Let me give you an example. When we were all young, everything that we got, we want it to be for ourselves. Am I right? Even when they give you something and the person says, give me back, you don't want to give it back when you are a child. And any money you, you have, you want to think of what you buy for yourself. Then when you became an adult, or let me put it this way, most of us, when you now become a parent and money comes into your hand, who do you think about first? Your children. Am I right? Even your children, if they are mature enough, they'll be saying, Daddy, your singlet has got a mark. You say, don't worry. You are thinking of buying singlet for your own child rather than you don't mind if your own has what? A mark. That is maturity. You have now become mature. Your own shoe is not good. You are thinking, but it's your money, oh, but you are thinking of spending the money to buy shoe for who? For your children. Am I, am I talking? That is to show you are now mature. If it is before that money, you go and buy shoe for yourself. Am I right? Service ambition. If you give room to it, it shows that you are still spiritually immature. You may be reverend, you may be pastor, you may be whatever. And that will not allow you to be an effective witness of the light. Because you always think of yourself first. Praise God. So we must flee selfish ambition. The second aspect of this evil passion is sexual immorality. And it's pronounced today. You know, because he said we should flee. If you want to be <laughs> effective and have impact, then also you must flee sexual immorality. In all its ramifications. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. 1 Corinthians 6 18. It says, flee fornication or sexual immorality. Every sin a man commits is outside of the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. You must flee every form of sexual immorality. Pornography is there. Fornication, adultery. They are dangerous sin because it's, they are sin against your body. It will cause you emotional scar. It will bring you into spiritual bondage and you no longer be effective. And then you become an ineffective and unfruitful minister. Because of the consequences. You must not toy with anything 
that speaks of sexual immorality around your life. It's better for you not to enter into it than to think you will easily come out of it. If God is going to greatly use you as a witness of the light, then you must flee from every evil passion of lust. A lot of things are happening in the church today. And that's why we have a lot of noise and we are not seeing results. God will not lower his standard for anybody. Have you seen a place where a country is in shortage of medical doctors? They don't have enough. And then they put out adverts and say, we don't have enough medical doctor. If you read geography, just apply. Degree is degree. No. You won't. You won't. Praise God. You won't lower the standard. And the Bible said the foundation of the lost standard, sure. I mean this see. Let everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So you must flee from every form of sexual immorality. And for our male ministers, we thank God there are more females in the church today. And we thank God because women are wonderful. They made the church to grow. They make the church to advance. They bring beauty and progress to the church. But also you need to be careful. Praise the name of the Lord. We have all categories of people in the church. All categories of people. Some people are not looking for deliverance. They are coming to you to bind you. Instead of you delivering them. Praise God. <laughs> I canceled a lady and uh, after that, the Lord said to me, you have done for deliverance. Let your pastor do it. So one day she came into the office and she said, uh, okay, the prayer is there. I said, ah, the pastor that will pray for you, they are around. And she said, no, it is you that will pray for me. I said, why? <laughs> why must I be the one to pray for you? <laughs> then she said, if you don't pray for me, then I don't need deliverance again. And I said, then go away with your bondage. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there are, you see, this we dim your light. You must flee every form of evil passion. And I want to repeat it. It doesn't matter where you go, they will look for you. You are the one who will have to keep running from them. That is the truth. I mean, look at it recently, sir. Hey. A sister who is the wife of a pastor told me that another pastor from another ministry called and said he would like her to have a baby for him. I'm telling you. Ah, what kind of madness? She said, she said, don't you know that I'm married? He said, I know you are married. It doesn't matter. This person I'm talking about has a ministry in court. Why? You see, that evil desire has got hold of him. It has held him down. Please, if you have that kind of thing, seek other minister that can help you. Praise God. Don't let it finally kill you and destroy you. It's possible you have brought yourself to the place where you are so much held down by that evil longing. Say with me, Father. Father. Every evil desire in my life Every lost, Every lost 
that wants to kill me. Kill them for me in the name of Jesus. Kill them for me before they kill me. Let them die. I want you to talk to the Lord. Turn into prayer. And just say, that evil desire, that loss that is pursuing me to kill me. Lord, kill that desire in me. Let it die. Let that desire die. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. In the precious name of Jesus. Let it die. Let it die. That wants to kill my light. Let it die in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Samson thought Delilah loved him so much. He thought it was love until that woman killed him. Flee. Amen. All of us ministers, we have to do what? Flee. No one's the anointing to stay. The anointing is flee. Don't say your own anointing, otherwise you will destroy yourself. Number three factor. If God is going to greatly use you as an effective and fruitful witness of the light, you must pursue godly characters. Number three, for a minister, for somebody who wants to be an effective and fruitful witness of the light, you must pursue godly character. This same 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. You know, immediately he said, he said in verse 22, he said, flee also youthful lust. The next word he said to us there is what? Pursue. So it is a combination of fleeing and what? And pursue. As you flee one, you pursue some other. Praise the name of the Lord. A minister, the person that God can use to bring light to others. To be an effective witness must pursue godly characters. And what does it mean to pursue? To run after. You run after. So nobody has the gift of righteousness. We all pursue it. Nobody has the gift of faithfulness. We all do what? Pursue it. Amen. <laughs> so no matter how many times we fall, we get up and then we pursue these godly characters because they are essential to our being effective and being fruitful in the ministry of being a witness to the light. And we have four of those aspects of godly character that are mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22. There are four aspects. So the Bible speaks about the four aspects of this godly character. Let's quickly look at them. Number one is what? Righteousness. It said, pursue righteousness. If you are going to be a fruitful witness, then pursue those behaviors that we be in conformity with God's word. Those deeds, those actions, those conducts that are in conformity with the word of God, that is righteousness. And we must pursue it so that God can use us as a witness. So it is a daily thing. Just like I said, we run consistently. Also, we pursue righteousness. We keep asking ourselves, 
what are those behaviors that are in conformity with the word of God? Why? Because if we pursue righteousness, our deeds, our conduct, we convince people even without our words. It will bring them to light. It will make them to seek after the light. A young man came to stay with me for some time. He's, he was a Muslim. And uh, because he came for an assistance from me, I was reluctant to preach the gospel to him because I didn't want him to say, I want to turn him to Christian because he came to ask for, he needed assistance. But I decided that he should come and stay in my house. So he was staying with me. I'm talking about conduct that is in conformity. We cause us to be a good witness. And after that, stay with me for some days. And then on Sunday, I just told him, we are going to church. And he said, I will follow you. So at least I know that was his choice. So he followed me to church. And the word of God was preached. And when the altar call was made, I saw this young man as one of those who came to the front to give his life to Christ. His name is Fatai. I said, Fatai, why did you come? He said, the kind of life I see you living, within the days I'll be here, I want to live that life. Another time, I was still combining my law office with the ministry. So I requested for youth coppers to work in my chamber. Again, this young man came, and uh, of course, I'm the boss. And I was thinking, if I started bombarding this young man with the gospel, he would say, which kind of uh, lawyer is this or guy? You know? And then he would say, this or guy wants to use his position. So before I got a place for him to stay, I also told him to come and stay in my house. So he came to stay in my house. And then, after some time, he spoke to somebody. He said, I know that my boss does not want to preach to me directly. But I have seen his, in his life that this, my boss, is a good Christian. And I have seen one person who is a good Christian and is also a practicing lawyer. So I have chosen to follow that path. And that is how he gave his life to Christ. You know, so when we do this, you may not know who is watching you. But he's speaking to people around you. Amen. You know, he, he's, uh, our righteous conduct is contagious. Let me use that word. My former house where I was living in Diarwe, a young man came to do some POP work in a building, not very far from us, in a building. I don't know him. But you know, usually when they come like that, they will come and stay around that area for some time. They walk in the day, in the night time, in the daytime. So as we pass, you know, when we are going to, hello, how are you? You know, that kind of thing. Hello, how are you? One day, they, he just knocked the door, the gate of our house. And they said, somebody is looking for me. I went, I said, I don't know you. He said, what's your name? My name is Taiwo. Where are you from? He said, actually, I'm from Togo. But... I'm working, I'm doing POP in Nigeria. So, what do I do for you? He said, since I've come around here, I've been watching your lifestyle. He said, I would like to follow you to the church you are going any Sunday. He didn't even know I'm a pastor, I'm a full-time minister. You, do, you know, the, I mean, there's no way I could have known that. He just told me, he said, I will follow you to the place. I want to serve this God. I never preached to him. That is why if we want to be an effective, he said, pursue 
Can I paint it this way? That in other words, if righteousness is running away from you, you run after it. In order for you to become an effective witness. Number two, he said we must pursue faith. And faith here speaks about faithfulness. Faithfulness. We must become people who are dependable. If we are going to be an effective witness. Why? Let me tell you simply this. The Bible says those who are faithful with little can be trusted with much. With much. So there will be more grace. There will be more anointing. There will be more responsibility. If you are faithful today. So that in that more grace, more anointing, you can make more impact for the kingdom of God. You can have influence for the kingdom of God. So he said, pursue righteousness then, pursue faithfulness too. Be faithful in that little corner. Praise God. Be faithful in that little corner. I was first ordained as a minister. In those days, we were having a fellowship where we call Faith Liberation our ministry. Some of you have an idea of the story. And Reverend Oset was our pastor that time. Faithfulness. Faithfulness will increase the privilege you have. To be a witness. And one day I was in the service. And he just came up. He said, God told me to ordain three of you today as, uh, a, as a minister in this place. And then he called the name and he called me out. I was never close to him. But I was faithfully doing the little in the corner where they placed me. And then... Years pass, and then we have what we call Living Faith Church. Some of you know about the Living Faith Church. And I was just doing all that I know I should do. Whatever is committed into my hand, I was pursuing faithfulness. The one my pastor did not see, the one I just decided I would be faithful. So one year they said we are going to Kaduna. Bishop was in Kaduna that time. And they were ordained some people. So they said I should go. I did not ask my pastor what they were ordained me for. Because that is not what I'm looking for. I didn't ask him, sir, before we even read, what are you going to ordain? I just followed. Because for me it was an opportunity to receive again the word of God. And to be imparted. So I followed. And then we started having the program. And the Sunday came. That was the last day of the program. And Bishop came. I'm going to ordain some people as pastor. And they were calling names. And before I know, they called my name. I appreciated it. But let me tell you something. All I was concerned was this faithfulness. And I was surprised when some people in Cardano were telling me, ah, brother, we thank God for the little you are doing in that place. I don't know them. I don't know how they got to know about it. All right? When I came back, some of my friends said, ah, what you have done is not right. You did not tell us they are going to ordain you as a pastor who have celebrated. I said, myself, I did not know. But do you know what? That ordination gave me opportunity to stand on the pulpit thereafter and be a better witness and become more effective. By reason of that ordination, my senior pastor has sent me to other places. And I've become a blessing. Other ministry, other places. Praise the name of the Lord. Pursue faithfulness. If what I'm telling you, it does not pay. Please, if you, are want, you want to be a sincere and effective and fruitful witness of the light, please pursue it. Praise the name of the Lord. Pursue it. Pursue it. It will help you to be effective. Number three, pursue love. Now, this love is a decisive love. Now, 
Now, I said somewhere we can love the unlovable. And somebody asked me, how is that possible? That simply means that we should not allow the attitude of people around us to cause us to create a thread in our heart for them. Do we understand what I'm trying to say? Look, if I want to greet you and you dodge me, there's no way I can greet you. So that one is not an issue. But I should not have a thread in my heart for you. So I still love you. The day we happen to meet and you are available, I will greet you. Praise God. A decisive love. Because the man that does not love you, the one that does not love you, know that he doesn't love you. But he also know that you love him. Amen. Love for God and then love for those who are around us. This look like tiny things and I decided to speak about them because they make us effective and fruitful as a witness of the light. People around us in the church pursue love. To love God, to love them. Those under you as minister, pursue those around you. I said some are unlovable, but you will still love them. I'm talking in terms of their character and attitude, but you will still need to love them. Don't harbor a threat for anybody. Don't. Have the love of everyone in your heart so that it will not be a barrier to you. And number four, pursue peace. I'm talking about pursuing godly character. Pursue peace. Romans 12, 18. If it be possible as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Pursue peace. <laughs> Now, that's one of the things that will make you an effective witness and fruitful one. In your little corner. And to pursue peace means you have to humble yourself. Praise God. To pursue peace, you will do what? Anyone pursuing peace must be ready to humble himself. Because sometimes you have to be the stupid person. But what you are out for is to win this person to the light. To pursue peace means we have to be ready to confess our failure. We are not always right all the time, even as ministers. But we confess our failure to the people around us so that at the end of the day, we can be an effective witness of the light. I tell them in my church, I operate the law of advanced forgiveness. I said, before you, for, you, you, you offend me, I'm forgiving you. They will laugh. They say, how do you do it? I said, that is how I'm going to pursue peace with all of you. Even when you did not come to apologize, I'm forgiving you. I won't allow you to stop me. Hmm. Praise God. If we are going to be that effective witness to the light, we must be ready to humble ourselves. We must be ready to confess our failure. And then we must be forgiven. Praise God. You must not hold grudges so that you can be an effective witness to the light. Don't hold grudges. Don't give room for it. Receive that grace this morning in Jesus' name. Accept that you can make me mistake, even though you are a minister. And then when the occasion comes, in order to be able to have that more impact on the people, confess your failure. Jesus humbled himself, am I right? See his discussion with that woman by the well. 
But at the end of the day, he was able to win that woman to the kingdom. That will be our testimony in Jesus' name. Number four, to be greatly used by God as an effective and fruitful witness, we must also pursue godly relationship. I've, talk, I've spoken about godly character. We must also pursue godly relationship. Pursuing godly relationship will help you to become an effective and fruitful witness of the light. Verse 22, 2 Timothy 22. It said, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, which we have spoken about. That is godly characters. Faith, love, peace. Then look at the next statement now. With those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. He's talking about godly relationship. Do it with those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Godly relationship. Another version says, in company with others who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Those with a pure heart are not perfect, but they are faithfully pursuing right relationship with God. You can't function in isolation. You must surround yourself with godly people for you to be more effective as a witness to the light. It's, it's one of it that we have this morning now. We're having this minister's meeting. It's a forum of association for us, for godly relationship. And you know, some of us have gone to meetings that God brought us in relationship with some other men of God. And that relationship has blessed us. It has blossomed us. Blossomed us. It has, it has given us platform. Glory be to God. In the process of pursuing those wonderful godly relationships, they have created platform for us to become witnesses and effective one in touching the life of others. So to be an effective witness of the light, we must pursue godly relationship. Those other people who are calling on the Lord from a pure heart. We have the story of Daniel. Daniel and his three friends. You know the story. Because they inspire themselves. And in inspiring themselves, they became effective and faithful witness. And fruitful witness to the light, even in a strange land. I like the story of Daniel. Now, when we started from Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Daniel proposed in his heart, he will not defile himself. Okay? We have these three other brethren with him. I wouldn't know who started that decision or discussion. But definitely, Daniel possibly was the one that influenced the other three. That they too said, since you choose to go this way, we are going to go this way. And that godly relationship enable them as together to be able to become effective witness for the light. And then the Bible says after some days, they saw that they were better than others. So they began to shine even in a strange land. And then something happened in Daniel chapter 3. You know, the three Hebrew brothers now, I always ask myself, what happened to Daniel? Because he was not one of them. Okay, I took it that maybe they caught three of them and uh, Daniel was not there at that time. But one thing I can get is that I'm sure wherever Daniel was, he must somehow be encouraging them, don't give up. Am I right? He must be encouraging them, look, don't compromise. Don't bow to this God. That is godly relationship. But, and you know, because they had that encouragement, you know, all that we have there was that they said, okay, oh king, we don't care what you're going to do to us. But I believe Daniel was doing something to help them to take their stand. And finally, they threw them into the, into the furnace. And then they came out. 
And what was the result of their coming out? The king said, the God of these people has become the God we will all serve. So they became more effective and fruitful as a witness to the light of the God of the Jews because of their relationship. And when we now come to Daniel chapter 6, it was Daniel's turn. Their own was in chapter 3. Daniel's own turn now. They will throw him into the lion's den. What do you think was happening? We didn't hear about those three brothers, isn't it? But I'm sure they were somewhere. Sending a message to Daniel. Brother, you know you encouraged us the other time. You too. Your own has come. Stand. May you get such people around you. Because they were say, stand too. You are the one, you know, when we were, you are the one who was saying we should stand though. It's your own turn too now. And brother, we are praying for you. God who did not fail us will not fail you. And they, he too came out. And what was the end of the two? His own two. The king said, the God of Daniel is the God we will serve. Pursue godly relationship. Please, I want to say this to ministers of God. Don't let the material things be the reason why you will pursue a relationship with somebody. Because you don't know how the person got there. Let it be the desire for godliness that is pushing you. <laughs> Amen. Let it be the desire for what? For godliness. We cannot be godly on our own. We need to be surrounded by brothers and sisters who are fighting to be pure. Righteous. They will pray for us. They will hold us accountable. They will encourage us. And then as we come together too, they will help to train us. And in this, in going through this, we become more effective. We become more fruitful as a witness to the light of the gospel. Praise God. Do you know there are times by this kind of godly relationship, you can get a message to preach. By that kind of relationship, the Lord just gives inspiration from that. And then you go and preach it. And somebody says, wow. You say, eh, don't say wow. There's a relationship that brought this. And uh, somebody said, look, my life is touched. My life is transformed. When you pursue that kind of godly relationship. Like I said, please. Don't let it be for material things. They are temporary. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says we should not neglect the assembly of one another. We saw Elisha receive impartation from Elijah. And we saw Paul receive impartation from, we saw Timothy, sorry, receive impartation from the hand of Paul. When we walk with godly and mature brothers and sisters, then we are being built to become more effective as a witness to the light, who is Jesus Christ himself. If we have, we have spoken about ungodly relationship, we cut it. And then when we cut it, we cannot stay alone. We sought for godly relationship. We pursue it. And then we lay hold on those things. We get the light. Praise God. You know, there are things when we're in godly relationship, we learn them by ob observation. They don't even need to teach us. But if we open our eyes, we will understand. And they will help us too to become better light. Praise the name of the Lord. It is something we must pursue. Number five, I will take seven, but I will be very fast now. Number five thing that will make you effective is you must become a servant. If you want to be an effective and fruitful witness of the light, 
you must become a servant. Verse 24. He said, and the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Able to teach and patient. A servant. You must become a servant. Most of the epistles, we will always see that Paul referred to himself as a servant of the Lord. Sometimes, if you read some other version, he referred to himself as slave of the Lord. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Philippians 1, 1. If you read those two scriptures, Romans 1, 1, Philippians 1, 1, it speaks, Paul referred to himself as servant of the Lord, or the Lord's servant, or the Lord's slave. The type of person that God will use as an effective witness is a servant, one that is totally committed to serving God and to serving others. Most of the people that we saw that God called and made them witness to the light, they were people that they were serving as at the time they were called. And so, readiness to be a servant becomes an important key. Thank God for the honor we have as minister, but please make yourself a servant. And as you do that, you see that you are going to have more effectiveness to impart life and to touch life. David, for example, he was serving. When the man of God went to their family house, and then the other brothers were there, he was not there because he was doing what? He was serving. And God said, the one that is serving is the one that I will use. Moses too was serving, isn't it? Was serving. The man of God spoke about him yesterday when he now followed the sheep. He was serving. And he was faithfully serving. Like we are told, the distance where he took those animals to was a sign of commitment to service. And there, God saw him and said, I will make you an effective witness for me. You are going to go and do something. We have so many examples. The disciples, they were fishing. The early disciples, they were fishing. They were serving. If God looks for a person to use as a witness, he finds and he seeks out for people who serve. Not serving your own need, but serving God and serving others. You qualify yourself to become someone that God will use greatly to be an effective witness for the light. And what are the characteristics of a servant? Number one, the Bible made us to understand that the servant must know his master. He must know his master. So we have in that verse 24, it says, and a servant of the Lord. So always ask yourself, whose servant are you? Whose servant are you? A servant of the Lord. You must acknowledge that God owns you and be ready to submit to the Lord. If you live for your own pleasure, you will not be able to be a true servant for the Lord. Number two, the servant we are talking about, you must become, in order to be effective, you must be kind. You must be kind. The word kindness can also be translated as gentle. Just imagine how a mother cares for her own children. If you will come to that level of kindness, you'll be able to be a better witness an effective witness for the light. Praise the name of the Lord. You must be patient. Number three, you must be patient. The word patient actually means be ready to bear some 
insult or some evil or some negative thing. Now, when you're a servant, people don't appreciate you. Am I right? <laughs> and uh, another thing you realize is that people treat you actually. They are harsh on you because you're a servant. Now, if you see yourself as God's servant, you will not bother when people do not appreciate you or treat you harshly. But if you know it is the Lord that you are servant to, he will reward you and promote you at the right time. Praise God. You will not hold grudges. You will accept the unkindness of people to you. You will accept the unkindness of people to you. And that is what patience is all about. Patience and patience and patience and patience. People that you will minister to, they ferry from one person to another. It is your patience as a servant, that will, help, that will help you to finally win them to the light. Some of them later will realize and they will come and apologize. But if you really want to touch their life, you see, because if you are not patient, it is what you do they will be talking about. They will not be talking about what they did to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Next, you must be gentle to others. As a servant, you must be gentle. Now, being gentle does not refer to weakness. But being gentle means you are able to control the power you have. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. It's not that you have become stupid now. Or you are weak. But... The word gentleness means you are able to control the power that you have. And in doing that, you'll be able to affect the life of more people and be a true witness for them. Praise God. Something happened some time ago and the, a brother in the church under some strange influence he started saying some things to me. He started saying some things about me. You know, negative things, wrong thing, you know, that kind of thing. He was even almost telling people that maybe I have one calabash in my house. You know, what? just saying all manner of things. And uh, some of the brethren said, we, we, let's go and beat this brother, sir. I said, ah, don't beat him. They said, how can he be insulting our father and the Lord like that? I said, ah, no, don't beat him. You know, he was saying things that had the capacity to create doubt in the heart of others about me and my integrity. Now, I know this to be a brother in Christ. And I know that the way he was behaving, he was under manipulation. If I now speak something negative, I will complicate his matter. So I didn't do anything. But you know what I was doing rather? I was praying for him in my closet. But sometime after he had done his own, he began to suffer. And when he began to suffer, you know what he was saying about? He said, Daddy cursed me. Why did Daddy cause me? He said, Ah, those things I did, I know it cursed me. And that is why my situation is complicated. And you can imagine, I didn't curse him. I was praying for him. Then he had an opportunity to come and meet me. And when he came, he told me a lot of suffering he went through. And he said, Daddy, you curse me. I said, we are before God. I did not say a word of Because I know if I curse you, especially that I'm innocent of all these things that you are saying, 
I don't think there will be remedy for your life again. I said, I did not cause you. Those things you did, you are just reaping the affairs. But for me to cause you, no. And they came and they apologized. Even some, there was some brother in the church, they were not ready to forgive him. <laughs> I said, but the Milo share now. I said, I'm just kidding. And you know today, it's one of the leading ministers in the redeemed Christian church of God. Going from Dubai to this place as a minister from one place, you know. I prayed. I took him through again. And I brushed him. When he was engaging in service with redeemed, they have to send one of their proficient pastor from Lagos to me to find out the truth of the statement. You know. Whoever he touches today, indirectly, I am touching those lives too. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. So please be gentle. They will provoke you. But the Bible says here, if you want to be an effective minister that will have fruit as a witness, you must be gentle. You must be gentle. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And finally, let me say this. He must hope in God. A servant must have hope in God. Have hope. You know this word he said. In humility correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. So that they may know the truth. So we do it in hope. We do it in hope. We do it in hope. Trusting God that at the end of the day, we'll bring these people to the light. And so we will not fight, will not argue. We are going to rely on God. And God will not fail you in the precious name of Jesus. I said I'm going to give you seven. Number six, strong prayer life. If you are going to be an effective and fruitful witness, you must give yourself to a strong prayer life. James chapter 5 verse 16. James 5 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. Thank God for packaging. But what is more important is prayer life. Praise the name of the Lord. We must, we must give ourselves to prayer life. And number seven. To be an effective and fruitful witness to the light, you must give yourself to regular fellowship with that light. A regular fellowship with that light is number seven. Regular fellowship with the light. You can project for me 1 John 1 verse 3. 1 John 1 3. Can I have it? Okay. First John 1, 3. First John chapter 1. Okay. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That emphasis. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Regular fellowship with the light. We are called to be witness to the light. So, how much light will we be able to produce has to do with our regular fellowship with the source of our light. I told you yesterday that a lamp does not shine with its own light. You remember? All right? 
It has to be supplied with light from another source. And then when it has been supplied with that light, it shines. The lamp shines. And everybody benefits. That is why you are witness to the light. But you are not the light. That light is given to you and then you shine it. And that means now that you have to be in his presence. So that you can fill your lamp with freshness. The freshness of his grace, of his mercy, which can only happen through fellowship with him. Through fellowship with him. As ministers of God, who will be a witness and be effective one, I see us like foam. Like foam. You know, this, uh, we have a mattress, it's a foam, isn't it? But you know, I'm talking of just the smaller type you can hold in your hand. And that is who we are. Now, when we are soaked inside water, we have weight, isn't it? If you have a foam and you put it in water, it becomes heavier. Am I right? All right. And when you take that foam out of the water and you place it on any object, in time, what will happen? The water will be dripping and the foam will be getting lighter. The first time you just brought the foam out of the water and you place it, there's no wind that can blow it away. Am I right? Because of the heaviness. But if you keep it in that place for a period without returning it inside water again, a time will come. A small wind will do what? We blow it. That is why we have to engage in constant fellowship. The fellowship is when we go to him and we are like we dip ourselves in the water. And we'll come out as every weight. And then the pressure that around us, the ministration, drains us. When that woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, what did he say? Someone touched me. And they asked him, how did you know someone touched you? Everybody is touched. He said, no. Because virtue has gone out of me. I felt that something has dripped out of this foam. Do we understand what I'm saying now? He said, virtue went out. Therefore, I need to return to the place of virtue to fill up again in order to be able to release the same virtue to heal another woman with issue of blood. Praise God. Are you getting my illustration? And that is what happened. So we talk. We relate and whatever it is, and then it's reducing the volume in us. And then we must return to the place of fellowship. So he said, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. We must return to the place of fellowship. Another illustration I can give you is this. That when we get to the place of fellowship, we are charged like our phone. Okay? Maybe if you charge it well, you have 100%. Am I right? And then as you use, either to call or to receive call <laughs> or to, to, to check something on your phone, whatever it is, you see from 100, it's going to 80. Am I right? 15, 10, and then it's turn red. Okay? So, what do you do? You go to the place of recharge that same 15% can become 100% again if you go to the place of recharge. So when we are carrying out this ministry as minister, we discharge. We do what? We discharge. And we return to do what? To recharge. Praise the name of the Lord. We must not joke with this if we are going to become an effective and fruitful witness of light. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And if we can give ourselves to these seven things, we will become a man, a woman that God can greatly use. And will become effective and fruitful witness to the light. Jesus Christ himself. In all dimensions. Yes, at some point we will say it. At some other point, we will not need to talk. Because our godly character will be enough to communicate the message. And as we present ourselves as servant, we are more effective to affect and influence life. Glory be to God. I believe after today, you will not just be a witness to the light. You will become an effective witness. You will become a fruitful witness. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. That like we have laid the foundation yesterday. We are so ever. We are so ever. We stand as witness for Christ. And we impact life. And we touch life. And then we celebrate the light. God is pleased with us. And then he will promote us. He will lift us. Those things we are seeking, they will begin to look for us. That shall be our story. In the precious name of Jesus. Can we just rise on our feet and appreciate God this morning for the opportunity we have to be called as minister to be a witness to the light. Let's appreciate him Again, remember, we are human witnesses. And let's thank him again that you are there. He said, if this one keep quiet, I will raise stone in their position. I want you to thank God that God is not raising stone in your position. You are the human witness today. Thank God for our generation. If the Lord tarry, all the human witness will come after us. But thank God that in this, your generation, you are chosen. God has appointed you as one of the witnesses to the light. Through you, somebody can be saved. God wanted that through you, somebody will be healed. Through you, somebody will be delivered from the bondage of the devil. Through you, there will be deliverance and freedom. Give him thanks for that. Give him thanks. Thanks for that. Give him thanks for that. Oh, somebody can have a destination of eternity with God because of you. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for that. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Say with me, Father, Father, in any relationship that I am in presently, hindering me, me from being an effective witness, Amen. cut it off for me in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. <laughs> cut it off. Cut me off. I want to be an effective and fruitful life. If there's any, just cut it off. The relationship that is stopping me, keeping me from being that effective light. Father, disconnect me from that relationship. Disconnect me from that relationship. Disconnect me from that relationship. Separate me from that relationship. In the name of Jesus. Separate me, disconnect me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I pray for you today that all will open your eyes. 
to those ungodly relationship and they separate you. The way he made it to happen so that even though Lot was a part of Abraham, but they cannot continue together. I pray that the Lord will cause you to see clearly and be disconnected for you to become effective and for you to become fruitful witness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, Father, Father every, evil every evil desire in me, in me that is not allowing me to be an effective and fruitful witness, purge me in the name of Jesus. Purge me in the name of Jesus. Purge me of this evil desire, selfish desire. Immoral desires. Purge me in the name of Jesus. Every of those longing. Every of those appetites. Purge me in the name of Jesus Christ. Purge me in the name of Jesus. Purge me in the name of Jesus. Purge me Lord. Purge me Lord. Purge me Lord. Purge me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Risk a lava shit. He said, Tell you, but she the neighbor is. Let's satan the bash. Link a young de morobo sit a libosh. Link a sapato shot to the bossy. Red the skin de libosh de liboske. Le cascande le produce to le bosque. Le capato shada la basi sadaba. Rescende le produce to the bar. Le cassande le capato shinde le bar. E credisca la pato shinda la basica la bashide. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. There are relationships and there are relationships. There are relationships that when you you connect with. Before you know it, you become effective. You become fruitful. And I want you to pray and say, Father. That relationship that I need for me to become more effective and fruitful witness to the light. Father, connect me. Father, link me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Connect me and link me in the name of Jesus. Connect me with that relationship. Link me with that relationship. That will translate to my effectiveness. That will translate to my fruitfulness. As a witness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give me the link. Give me the connection. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give me the link. Give me the connection. In the name of Jesus. Give me the link. I desire that link. I desire that connection. With that godly relationship. That we produce in me. To become the effective witness. To become the. The fruitful witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Connect me, Lord. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, connect me, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, connect me, Lord. Rally Cascandala Patushitali Brodoska, La Chandele Credebo Sunday, the 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 Sunday, In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. I will make my life your dwelling place. I will build. Your throne in my life. Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy 
Spirit, come and take your place in my life. I will make, I will make my life your dwelling place. I will build. Your throne is come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit, come, man, take your place amen let's sing it one more time I will make my life your dwelling place I will make my life your dwelling place I will your throne in my heart Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit, come, man, take your place, amen. Say with me, Father, from today, I ask for more of you. Son, from today, I ask for more of you. Holy Spirit, from today, I ask for more of you. Can you turn that to prayer in the name of Jesus? More of you, less of me. Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit now. I'm asking for more of you, 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 Father, more of you, Son, more of you, Holy Spirit, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, Father, more of you, Son, more of you, Holy Spirit, more of you. As you take your place, so that in turn I can be an effective witness and a fruitful one for that matter. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, I pray this afternoon. Is there anyone here who is held down by? An ungodly desire. Is there anyone, Lord, who is under the grip of such lustful desire? I pray by reason of your presence in the house this morning that you would deliver such and liberate such. And set such free. So that he or she can be an effective witness. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says at the name of Jesus every name must bow. So under this congregational anointing. We declare that grief. To let you go. In the mighty name of Jesus. We declare. You will fulfill the assignment. Of being a witness to the light. And there shall be no limitation. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Father. Do it. That this your people will be free. To be the true witness to become the effective witness 
to become fruitful witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you because you have done it and you will do more. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can we please celebrate the Lord? Please take your seat as you do that. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord the more. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Before I take my seat, one more time, I just want to appreciate God's servant. Thank you very much for this opportunity and our mommy and all the ministers here. Thank you. I pray that together we all meet on higher ground in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate the Lord.